Welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, the Monday evening edition here on the 25th day of March 2024. Hope you had a good weekend. The weather improved some yesterday. It really improved today. The numbers were uh, pretty eye-popping today. We got up to 66 this afternoon after only 35 on Saturday and 45 on Sunday. That uh, 66 today broke a streak, a week-long streak, of cooler than average temperatures after, of course, a very warm first 16 days of the month. We're standing at about 7 degrees warmer than the average for March so far. Now, the rest of the month will be fairly nondescript in terms of our temperatures. In other words, I don't expect us to stray too far from the average over the next five, six, seven days or so. All right, it's Monday evening. You know what that means. So we're coming up uh, on the solar eclipse two weeks from today. The uh, solar eclipse gets underway early in the afternoon down uh, in Mexico and crossing into Texas, and the path of totality will roll across places like Dallas and into parts of uh, Arkansas, southeastern Oklahoma as well, heading up towards parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and for us in northeast Ohio and northwest PA, of course, the path of totality will cross our region middle of the afternoon. We're talking about 315 is when the path of totality will be right over northeast Ohio and parts of northwestern PA as well. And of course, this uh, will continue then through western New York up into parts of New England and eastern Canada as the afternoon wears on. So yeah, we're now less than two weeks away from the uh, solar eclipse. It's gonna be fantastic if the weather cooperates. Now we're at the two week uh, point. Can we predict the weather with a great deal of certainty two weeks out? No, we cannot. Um, but what we can do is talk about trends and generalities at this stage. I think by the end of this week, we'll start to become a little more confident in the overall pattern. I don't think we're going to be able to say with a great deal of certainty uh, whether it's going to rain or not, whether it's going to be too cloudy or not, until we get into the very last couple of days of March and probably even the first couple of days of April. Now, given all that being said, all that preamble, uh, we have some computer, computer model data available to us at this lead time. It has to be taken with an enormous grain of salt. Now, based on climatology and the limited, you know, computer model data that we uh, can take a look at at this range. I put my initial odds of favorable conditions at about 40%. What do I mean by favorable? I mean most or at least part of the sky would be clear. Not favorable would be just an overcast day. Even if it doesn't rain, if it's just overcast, we would call that not favorable. Don't forget, the sky does not have to be perfectly sunny to be able to check this out. We just want where the sun is going to be in the sky in the afternoon on the 8th. We want that part of the sky to be clear. So, you know, historically speaking, as far as a precipitation chance, it's about 50-50 on April the 8th, whether we see measurable precipitation or not. The average high on April the 8th is 57 degrees. Uh, great meteorologists, a great follow on social media, particularly if you're on uh, Twitter or X, uh, Tomer Berg, um, B-U-R-G, uh, he came up with uh, some great visualization uh, model of modeling here on his site. Now, again, this is based on computer model data. You have to take this with a big grain of salt, but this is weather for weather geeks after all. So we can geek out to some of this stuff. And while Youngstown is not an option on his site as far as selecting a city in the path of totality, Cleveland's close enough. And right now, based on the GFS ensemble, the European ensemble, the long range computer models, in other words, uh, you know, it looks fairly unsettled. It looks fairly cloudy. Right now, 81% of the members of the ensemble uh, modeling have uh, no precipitation or a trace. About, what, 30% have measurable precipitation on the order of at least a couple hundredths of an inch. Right now, no members have over 0.2 inches, but, you know, when we're talking two weeks ahead of time, it'd be pretty rare for the bees to be such a strong signal that a lot of the members of a model spread would have a whole bunch of rain um, because there's just so many possible solutions two weeks out that it all tends to get washed out a little bit. Um, and so it'd be pretty rare to see some sort of extreme event um, advertised in an ensemble product this far out. So, you know, that's the way it looks right now as far as the model data. Take it uh, for what it's worth. It's not worth a whole lot at this point. I think the model information will become a little more uh, reliable and useful by the end of this week and especially into next week. In the meantime, on this Monday evening, boy, it would have been a great day for an eclipse today. We had lots of sunshine out there, but we have a potent storm system off to our west producing a rainy evening from 
Memphis to St. Louis and up towards Milwaukee as well. A severe weather threat down along the lower Mississippi Valley. And this is a doozy of a cold front. Coming east, 34 in Wichita, 63 in Topeka. Now, the distance between Wichita and Topeka in Kansas is not very, not, you know, it's not much of a distance. Uh, not much mileage in between those two cities. Uh, and so that's a big temperature contrast. And as this front continues to come east, there will be some dynamics in the atmosphere at play tomorrow. Uh, some changing of the wind direction and speed with height. Wind shear, in other words. Um, in western Ohio, up into parts of Michigan, a good chunk of Indiana. That's why the Storm Prediction Center today did... Uh, outline a lot of that area in the low end one on the one to five scale risk for severe weather. I think this is going to be one of those situations that's very marginal. It's not going to be super unstable in that zone, but there's a lot of wind shear at play. So in a place like Toledo, Dayton, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, uh, it'll be a day to stay weather aware. In eastern Ohio and western PA, uh, we do not expect severe weather around here. In fact, thunder is exceedingly unlikely. What is likely is, yeah, pretty much a washout on Tuesday. Now, Late last week, it looked like this front would be slower and that most of the rain would be Tuesday night. But over the weekend, the modeling has sped up the front, and so it just looks like it's going to rain for most of Tuesday, half an inch to three quarters of an inch, advertised by our modeling. And I think it'll be uh, raining in most spots by 7 or 8 in the morning, and then light rain with us all day. Now, that threat for a heavy, gusty storm probably is highest late afternoon. Uh, about dinner time out here, Detroit, Toledo, maybe down towards Dayton, the I-75 corridor. But that band will weaken as it comes east. So again, we're not concerned about severe weather around here. The rain will taper off as we head towards sunset Tuesday evening. Actually, some, some clearing of the sky may allow for a very colorful sunset Tuesday evening. That's something we'll be watching for. And then in the wake of this front, a blustery day coming up on Wednesday. A mix of sun and clouds and then high pressure builds in for the end of the week and that means some pretty nice weather for Thursday and for Friday. We have Easter weekend coming up and while there could be a shower in spots on Saturday, right now we have a dry forecast for the holiday on Sunday and with a high of 50, it's not exactly average, it's actually a little bit below average by a few degrees but again nothing remarkable temperature wise happening over the next week or so. I, uh, I would expect it to be a halfway decent day coming up on Easter Sunday. It would be nice if it were a little bit warmer. But that's not in the cards for the next couple weeks. Now, this does not look like a very cold pattern, but it doesn't look very warm either. That 66 we had today, probably our high water mark through the end of March and probably the first several days of April. Uh, 49, the best we can do with the rain tomorrow. We bounce back up to 57 on Wednesday, but then we're within a few degrees of 50 for a few days, maybe some middle 50s by early April. But don't forget, in early April, mid 50s is par for the course. So a 56 degree day on April the 1st is only two degrees above the average. So bottom line for you as we head into the last stages of March, the first stages of April, not expecting anything at this point uh, that will resemble the pattern we were in for most of February and early in March. We'll have more updates coming up on future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks on the short range and the long range. In the meantime, thank you for watching on this Monday evening. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.